click. And on the mailbox by the front stoop was a 26 minute and 39 second videotape. Um, the only VCR I had was in my six year old daughter's bedroom. I popped Toy Story 2 out and I saw the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. The tape showed what appeared to be Kelly engaged in various sex acts with a minor. DeRogatis and his editors at the Chicago Sun-Times turned the tape over to the police. We thought this was evidence of a felony of an underage girl being hurt. So did prosecutors. Oh, man. Oh, man. They are going to get this man. But they already got him. He's on the hook. Um, You may have heard this on TMZ. This guy right here alleges that he found the tape in a box of tapes from like 2000 or whatever. And he said it was a VHS tapes. You know, when you used to have the VHR, a VHS tape. And it was supposed to be a concert, but it was R. Kelly engaging in sex acts with an underage girl or multiple underage girls. Now, the question is, how long has this guy had this tape? How long has he been sitting on it? Did he know about it? And I'm guessing this lady over here is his wife. Now, we're not passing any blame on anybody. Listen, the shit is ugly. And I got to be honest with you. Look, like, Listen, it is ugly. It is ugly. It is ugly. The most important thing overall is I understand how the victims may feel, but somebody needs to keep an eye on R. Kelly and make sure he's probably not going to uh, try to hurt himself. This is uh, Sparkles right here. This is, is this, was, was she the aunt? Of the girl that R. Kelly allegedly peed on in that that tape. I saw the tape. It was was a middle school. I believe it was high school when I first saw the tape. It was me and my like back in high school. It was like me and my homies. And in like urban high schools, it was the talk of the town. Remember, there was no smartphones. There was no Internet. It was like, yo, you can go to the bootleg stand and under the stand. He got like the little porn shit and he got the R. Kelly tape. So let me tell you, when I first watched it. I didn't know what to expect. I'm thinking like, oh, we're going to go watch some porn. Honest to God, I was probably like 15, 16, maybe young. I don't even remember. But I was, we was watching and I got, yo, I don't know what. Listen, listen, we never watched that shit again. Like, and, and the thing is, I think everybody felt the same way. Like, who the fuck did he pee on her? What the fuck? Is that sex? Because, you know, we young at the time, you know? He's like, is that what niggas be doing? You know, like, what the fuck? So it wasn't like, I'm thinking like, it, he's it, like, it's a deviant. You know, a sexual deviant. That's my honest to God opinion. He's a deviant. So we're going to listen to this a little bit over here. And we're going to talk about how we got here. So I did get a chance to watch all of the R. Kelly stuff. I work from home. You know, I'm a boxing journalist, but now we're dabbling into, you know, world news. We're peppering it in. However, boxing and combat sports is my heart. But it is time to move on to other things or broaden our horizons. So I call this T Street Uncut, where we talk about news. Um, um, I do want to talk about Jaguar lady. You know, the lady that got, um, uh, tried to take a selfie in the Jaguar, you know, did Jaguar shit and, you know, fucked her up. She went to the zoo later and apologized like today. Anyway, the, the time is 10.04 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, March the 11th, 2019. So you can consider this my review of uh, Gail's, Gail Kim's interview with um, R. Kelly. You know, they were peppering it throughout the week, giving us little bits and pieces. And I was thinking it was going to be some real, real exclusive content, but it wasn't, you know. It's just that they made it into like a little documentary, you know, where they had the interviews with um, the women, um, R. Kelly's two girlfriends that he's allegedly brainwashed. One is uh, Jocelyn. And apparently today they've been talking about, in fact, oh, shit, they're doing a live press conference right now. I need you all to bear with me. Oh, shit. No, we don't need that. Listen, I need you all to bear with me. I'm going to pause the video. They're doing a live press conference right now on hln okay i'm pause it be right back i'm gonna pull it up for you guys let me pull it up because i did record it please be recording oh no it's not recording um live tv let's see if we can do this real time record that shout out to xfinity all channels whoa that was unexpected 
Where's HLN? Where you at? Where you at, HLN? Where you at? Where you at? Let's see what this is. Morning Express with Rob and me. We can't, I can't let you watch it, but we can listen in. All right? Be right back. Let me, uh, I got to put this up. Sorry, guys. You know, it's for our protection. Come on. It's probably going to take a little while to load up since I'm doing all this live in real time. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. You can do it. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, I'm going to pause and be right back. I was found multiple times, no calls. And now two, over two years later, the world sees that he's still keeping you from calling your family. So our reasons as a savage family was not to go on the big publicity stunt or some people say we are clout chasers. No, we're not clout chasers. Ooh. We are concerned parents of our younger daughter who was 19 at the time that she met Mr. Kelly. We just want to make sure she's mentally, physically sound, healthy, and that she's not being mistreated in any way. But as the broken promises continue, and we don't hear from her for weeks, months, years at a time, it's something seriously wrong. And I urge you, Ron Curley's team, please allow us to have a meeting with our daughter as soon as possible. We're ready anytime. Thank you. This is all live so right the now. The details are real easy to work out. We can meet at my office. You can have a third party present. We can make sure that the meeting uh, is, is either recorded if you want to, whatever's necessary. But we want to make sure that this family reestablishes a relationship with their daughter. The purpose of all of this from the very beginning was because of the manipulation and a distraction that was occurring. We need to make sure that Joyce and Savage is okay. If everything is okay, Thursday, she could have been here. Friday, she could have been here. Saturday, she could have been here. Sunday, she could have been here. It's Monday morning. We have not heard from Darrell Johnson. We haven't heard from anybody from Mr. Kelly's team, and we haven't heard from Joyce and Savage. So I'm sorry. A two and a half minute phone conversation after two and a half years is not sufficient for a loving parents to realize how their daughter is doing and what is happening in this case. So that's why we're making this public plea again to Robert Sylvester Kelly. Make Joycelyn Savage available and make her available today. You can call me today at my office. We can set this up and we can get to the bottom of what's happening. We'll take any questions you have now. All right, I've been listening to a uh, press conference from the Savage family. Again, Joycelyn Savage wow. with R. Kelly for the last two and a half years. Her family won. Wow. Um, let me. I'm going to have to stop this right here. So they were, you know, that's the family of the one I was talking about. You know, she had a two minute or so phone call. In fact, I'm probably I probably have it here on stream for you. Let me find let me let me find wow, this shit is ugly. So I've never seen nothing like this before. Not on TV. Like it's being played out in front of the world. How can he clean his how can he Oh and then the tapes? Now, allegedly, this tape, well, this is the um, um, attorney of the women, the defendants, the one that, is, that are, um, well, the plaintiffs, right? Going after R. Kelly. So this tape that they're talking about right here, here, let me um, do a little disclaimer. Let's, let's listen to a little bit of the audio. And over the years. Let's listen in. So this tape apparently is old. Contact the tape. Uh, how did it end up in his possession? They don't know the answer to how it came into that box of many VHS tapes he has. And over the years, there have been friends that gave him sports tapes because they know he likes sports. Um, and I, I, he has no idea. He's tried to think about it and 
No idea. These are very old tapes. Believe it or not, my grandpa used to keep like boxes because you know back in the 80s and like 90s and all that shit, people used to be recording and have like boxes and boxes and boxes of tapes. No bullshit. And tapes were big as shit. VHS tapes, VCR tapes. So that right there, you know, especially for like a man, you know, like like collecting tapes. Back then, and having just a box of tapes in your basement, not knowing, like, damn, how the fuck, where the fuck are these tapes coming from? Very possible. Like, my grandma had a whole bunch of Golden Girls episodes taped, and they used to have something like where they used to be with a time to VCR to record the Golden Girls. But then you'll have like Goodfellas and maybe, um, um, you know, like Predator 2 with Danny Glover bootleg in that same box. No bullshit. <laughs> Real story. More than one. Ten? Um, we're not going to disclose the number, but more than one. Does Mr. Dennis have any ties to Mr. Kelly? Did Mr. Dennis has never met Mr. Kelly, has never had any communication with Mr. Kelly, and has never attended an R. Kelly concert. How do you know that the girls were underage, and was there any other man than R. Kelly or who you suspected to be R. Kelly on the tape? They assume that the girls were underage because they were not fully developed. Mm, mm, mm. And was he the only man on the tape? Or who you suspected? He was the only man on the, meaning R. Kelly, yes. was the only man seen on the tape. <sighs> let's pause one more time while i pull up some more from the uh gail kim um interview to when it came on cbs there was a what night was that what night was that again which night that was the six right friday night was the six i'm tripping friday night was the eighth so i'm gonna pull it up on the dvr we're gonna pause one more time before we damn it i don't want to see none of this man it's all this is all depressing you know, it then overshadowed the Michael Jackson stuff. You know, be right back. Who goes by the name Sparkle says she is the aunt of the girl on the tape. The guy comes over. He shows me the first few seconds of the tape. And it's her. I don't need to see anymore. Shut it off, please. Sparkle had introduced her aspiring rapper niece to Kelly. She recognized the 14-year-old as the girl in the video. But the jury never got to see the girl on the stand. Fifteen witnesses testified, identified her. Blood, family, mm -hmm. uh, people she grew up with, best friends for years, her basketball coach. The girl in the video never testified. Her mother and father never testified. Is it your understanding that people in your family settled or had some sort of agreement with R. Kelly? That I don't know. I don't know if any money was exchanged that's the popular opinion right there and many people blame her you know because they like well wait a minute you know about the situation with Aaliyah, so why was you letting him you know but just like with the michael jackson it's like yo like y'all knew that he had some issues with that in the past whether you believe he did it or not still it was inappropriate for him to be a grown man sleeping in a bed with children you know so in her case you know court of public opinion has always been from my understanding that like you know you knew how he was you see what i'm saying so it's always being pointed out that the reason why he got off is because they feel that there was like some money that was a, that was given to the girl's family and to the girl and that, you know, her, you know, not testifying and her saying and her family saying, nope, that's not her, you know, or her more so her parents, you know, from my understanding, saying, nope, that's not her. They just, you know, the case fell apart. But the thing is, now she's back in, you know, these new resurfacing tapes and then their new footage we don't know the quality of that footage though but from what we're understanding is now correct me if i'm wrong it's not vhs quality no more you know it's like a little bit better than that where it can't be disputed and they got the girls now that are going to testify this is their attorney right here you know and he's a mean looking boy boy headed looking look, look i mean for crying out loud look at his profile pic He's going, shit. <laughs> shit. Look at it. He going to get you, R. Kelly. From the, shit. You know? 
So go on his Twitter. Like he's he's very open with this shit. Over the last week, we have found the five another end we over the last week we had we have had five other individuals contact us with tapes. They claim show R. Kelly having sex with underage girl. Upon investigation, they don't, and the individuals would have no reason to have such a tape. Publicizing this evidence undermines the process. Oh, so he's got you know he's got some integrity. He's like, no, we got the real tapes. Their tapes are bullshit. Seems like that's what he's saying. Three attorneys have com confirmed to me in the last 72 hours that R. Kelly is shopping his defense to other lawyers in Chicago and trying to replace Steve Greenberg. This comes on the heels of that disastrous TV interview. Was the interview disastrous? It was crazy as shit, though. And it's like, when you... See, here's the thing. He never, ever said, listen, that other shit that they tried to frame me for, them girls, they was motherfucking lying. I'm in a custody trial. I'm in an ugly-ass custody battle. When I tell you right here, my baby mom is lying. She's lying. She's lying. She's lying. He will never, like, he's saying, well, it's the old shit, you know, and y'all can't be talking about the old shit. Nah, motherfucker, if you ain't do it, say you did not do it. Say you did not make a tape with underage girls. You did not do it. Say you did not do it. No. Look, show the tape right now. Look, that's not me. Look at his bone structure and shit. Look, look that's not me. No, he never did that shit. So in the court of public opinion, I'm sorry, he did that shit. I understand when people saying that it's easy for people to say, oh, well, he rich. And then with his history of liking girls and the fact that his he got two girlfriends that are 21 years old, and he's 50 fucking two or whatever, you know, all this shit just look bad. You know, it just look bad. It just looks bad. Like he's got a bet is 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 like is bad. Look bad. The fuck, the fuck does it say? I don't know how he could clean this shit up. How can he clean this shit up? And then another thing. They already booked him. He don't. He can't do no concerts or nothing. You know, he, he got some money stashed somewhere. He's got to have. He's got some money stashed somewhere. But he's doing these little bullshit, little three, four days in jail and shit, waiting for somebody else to bail him out. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's smart and crafty. Wait for somebody else so he don't have to dig into his own shit, where his own little, little stash is. But if he's having all these issues and he's just going to the bank for the first time he's saying by himself do you think he's paying his taxes mm. do you think uncle sam is somewhere waiting for everybody else to collect their bread and thinking like yeah what's up they always come last and they always get their man you think they're gonna get him shit is ugly i think they may be next no nobody seems to be addressing it like, he having issues paying child support. Was he paying his taxes? I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. We cover every single major fight live. And now, we're, tr we're trickling into news. Please subscribe.